So I've got this cobalt mower. I've had it for a couple years. I bought it used at a really good price and it has done great work. I use it kind of like a brush hog to tell you the truth because I got some robot mowers that do the most of the work for me, you know, no big deal. And uh, I, I was brush hogging <laughs> with it the other day and it just stopped working. The battery wasn't quite dead when it stopped working, but it gave me like a weird flash. I went to go recharge it and it was flashing all red lights. Uh, I figured like, oh, it's overheated. I was using it kind of hard, no big deal. Unplugged it, plugged it back in. It gave me a different series of lights and then the charger was doing this like back and forth red green thing. Couldn't get anything on the internet to tell me what was going on. And then I unplugged it, plugged it back in one more time and then it just, it was giving me some other errors. And the lights on this change. So normally you press the indicator button and from the button side over, it'll tell you how much charge there is. So, you know, one green light, two, three, four, or one red light, I think when it's all the way dead. But now it's only giving me one light all the way up at the top. So battery's dead. A new replacement battery is $250, which is more than what I bought the mower for. And I don't know if I want to spend that on something that is old and honestly a little outdated. The mower's not bad, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't use standard mower blades. It doesn't really have a whole lot of torque and it's kind of easy to bog it down uh, brush hogging with it. <laughs> I got a garden and I'll let some areas overgrow so at least once a year I have to go in and I have to knock down the they're, they're tiny trees like these are, are saplings that are usually not much bigger than this on there you know it's, it's not I, I'm not asking like pinky size stuff and I come down and I, I'm gentle with it but at any rate the mower don't work no more because my charger isn't charging the battery and it looks like a Torx number 10 is what we need to take this battery apart. So let's just do a little bit of investigations in here. I want to see what's going on inside. I have a feeling that it might be like a fuse or weirdly enough, I also saw online that a lot of other people were having the same problems with these batteries. And I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that this is like a planned obsolescence thing to where when it gets past you know five years that they just literally shut off but that has been a thing in the past to where there is literally an expiration date on a control board somewhere and when you get to your expiration date the thing would just shut your battery down and there's nothing that you can do to recover it it has been a thing in the past but i don't want to assume that i i want to assume that i overloaded the battery and i, I killed the bms or there was a fuse or something that got fried just because it's it's acting weird but it's also acting weird in a way where there's no telling what's actually going on oh man a spudger would be useful right now but i don't have one let's see we've got these little guys i i don't think that there's anything hiding underneath the sticker at least i didn't feel but that's one thing that manufacturers like to do is they like to hide a screw underneath the sticker, which in a battery in the middle, probably not going to have because it'd go right through the cells. But yeah, yeah. All right. There we go. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hey, this looks like a well constructed pack. Oh, the genuine Samsung's. Nice. 18650s. Fire hazard. <laughs> Something about a vape. <laughs> Uh, never carry her in your pocket or hand. I can imagine that. That's a good idea. All right. Uh, this may not pop out of the case. And I don't want to pry on it so much. So I was wondering if it was just a, a temperature thing. This is a 40 volt pack. So with sweaty hands, I really got to be careful because it could short out on my hands. But uh, let me go grab a voltmeter. I just want to see what our voltage is. Maybe I just overdraw the pack and it went too, it went too low. Let's find out. All right, trusty old Fluke 179. We're gonna see what sort of voltage we got. I'll just, I'll just probe the pins over here. Let's see, do we have any molding? Yeah, we got po positive and negative on the outside. We've got 
uh, a resistor symbol and a C symbol. All right, so it's uh, 40 volts. It says it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty cells. Let's do some math real quick. Is it? Uh, it's six amp hour, so it's actually ten cells. Well, I, I I can do the math on that. Uh, low voltage cutoff should be somewhere around 30 volts to 33 volts, depending. And it looks like we're sitting at 33, so that, that's actually fine. That's okay. Um, let's see. Between these two, what are we at? That's zero because they're connected together. All right. We got uh, 16 volts there. Okay, so the way this is constructed, it looks like we've got two cells in series up and down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in series there. I think I may have said that wrong. Two cells in parallel, top to bottom, which would make the most sense as far as construction, nice and easy that way. I'd like to get this out of the housing. But we're showing 33 volts, which is cool. I don't know why it's throwing those errors in, but it, it <laughs> I guess what I could do, technically, what I could do is I could throw this on a controlled amperage power supply, turn it up to like 36 volts and see if I can force it out of whatever the situation is. It doesn't, it doesn't smell like there's any burn in there. All the components look good on this particular board. The contacts themselves look fine. It looks like there was a little bit of contact grease put on them. There's a shunt, interestingly enough. There is a shunt on here. And I did attempt to reset the BMS by holding down this power indicator, right? So on some batteries, when they have these sorts of errors, you can reset the BMS just by holding it for an extended period of time. All right, shut off. I'm going to hit it again. Oh, hey, we're getting a different light on the second press. So blinky, 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 blink. It blinks 30 times. That's what it was doing originally. Oh, we're back to the green. Okay, okay. I'll just do this a few times and, and we'll see what happens. But it was giving us output voltage on those tabs there. So interesting it's going back and forth between the red blinking which is what it was doing originally and the green solid light but it's only one light so i feel like i could throw this on a power supply and force a little bit of charge potentially and then we'll see what happens so hey you know it's uh if i can have another electric mower because i did buy a replacement already i, I didn't want the downtime i didn't want to have to buy a 250 dollar battery and i needed to mow but the newer electric mowers, I got one from Toro. Toro, I think. I think. At any rate, they use a normal blade. Uh, I got one that was a 21 inch normal blade. I can sharpen it. It's not suspended with some weird plastic thing like this cobalt one is. And on top of that, ton more torque. I mean, this thing would not stop. So as long as I can keep the blade sharp, I can act a fool with it and I really did like the performance of the newer one and it's literally like a normal mower except for it's got a battery in the top a watt hour wise it was the same as this one this was 40 volt 6 amp hour the new one that I bought was 60 volt 4 amp hour same watt hours on the pack it's actually going to be less problem and load on the cells themselves so long term probably be a little healthier system for what we're doing which is mowing so there you go. A uh, little investigation here. Nothing that I figured out yet, but I tell you what, I'm going to throw this onto one of my controlled voltage power supplies, controlled amperage, controlled voltage power supplies. I'm going to see if I can maybe bump it up a little bit, see if we can push it out of this particular, you know, bad zone or whatever, and then we'll go from there. If you don't hear from me again on this, then it, it was not salvageable. But if it does come out of uh, whatever hibernation it's in, then I'll let you know. As always, post your questions down below if you do have them. Let me know if you like electric mowers or if you're still stuck on gas. Maybe you got a bigger yard than me. I mean, of course, I got the robot doing most of the work, so I don't need a lot of actual mowing in my mower. 
uh, so I understand if you still need gas, big yards, all that sort of stuff. My uh, weed eater, still gas. I got a lot of fence line. The electrics don't cut it. So yeah, let me know if you like the electric mowers, if you don't like the electric mowers and why. And yeah, maybe I can get this thing running. It'd be nice to have a, a spare, a backup, something to throw over my other house. Yep. So we're going to get on it. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.